Welcome to the Amtec Fast Test Help videos. In this video, we'll look at entering circuit details. In front of us, we can see a three phase, 10 way board. When entering three phase loading, it's fine to enter it on a single line. But if you need to enter single phases, you'll need to expand the three phase weight to show the three component ways. To do this, select the circuit number and phase on the far left hand side with a single left click. This should show you the three component ways. Select one of them and it will then expand to show each individual way. In this case, 1L1, 1L2 and 1L3. When entering circuit data, it's simply a case of typing in what you want to see there. Once entered, you can then cycle across the circuit details, entering data for the relevant fields. This can be done with the tab key by tabbing across and either control and arrow down. Or if I tab across again, you can use the drop down option to select the method you want to employ. Number of points served is a manual entry for a numeric value. Alive is also a drop down showing the most popular sizes of CSA for copper. In this instance, I'm going to select 10. The CPC contains copper sizes as well, but also a CPC wizard. In this case, we're using armoring as designated in our type of wiring section. So if I were to select the armoring option in the drop down, it would bring up the CPC wizard. The CPC wizard self-populates with values if they've already been entered. In this case, it's selected XLPE because we've selected a thermosetting cable in our type of wiring. It's also selected the phase conductor size of 10 mil because we've pre-selected that in our live CSA section. It's also pre-selected two core on the assumption that it's a single phase. It then gives us the actual steel armor CSA and on selecting OK, that will populate that field for us. If you don't wish this to appear, you can type any value you wish, including letters. You can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard to navigate through the certificate. The right arrow key will take me to the right and obviously the left one to the left. The drop down for maximum disconnection shows all the pre-entered values as stated in BS7671. If you select a value that has a tabulated maximum ZS rating in BS7671, it will automatically populate the maximum ZS permitted once you've selected the BSEN device and the rating. I'm going to select 0.4 here. My device is going to be a BS60898 MCB type B and I'm going to select the rating of 32 amps. As you can see it's pre-entered the value of maximum ZS. It's also pre-entered the value for short circuit capacity. This particular device has taken this from the settings option. It only leaves us to enter the operating current or not applicable for the RCD. A useful feature in FastTest is the ability to copy circuits. If you select a pre-populated circuit and then select set default circuit at the top, this is then remembered by the software. So on selection of another circuit, in this case the second spare way, if I apply that default circuit, it will paste in all the information that was initially gathered. Another useful feature is the add to list option. If there's something that you'll feel will be adding in quite a bit in circuit designation, if you select the field and right click, you'll see these options appear. At the bottom, or second from the bottom, you'll see add to list. Selecting this adds it to the drop downs that are available for circuit designation. And we'll see it here at the bottom of the list. FastTest also contains a flood fill option. By selecting a pre-populated cell, clicking the F5 or Function 5 key at the top of the keyboard will automatically populate the values in any empty cells below it. This will not overwrite existing data. Using a combination of the Tab key and the F5 key, certificates can be completed quite quickly. Other things worth mentioning in the circuit details are in the drop-downs. The drop-downs contain some pre-entered values. Things like way not available. This means that although the way is there, you physically can't connect a circuit to it. This could be because of an oversized device or a broken terminal. You also have the option of RCD module split board and RCD module covering. This indicates that these ways are taken up by an RCD. Another option is circuit not tested. When selected, this indicates that though this circuit is present, it didn't form part of the testing protocol. Once selected, circuit not tested can be unselected by selecting the circuit designation, right clicking and then undoing circuit not tested. It will then return to the former value 
for circuit designation. It's worth mentioning that when circuit not tested is selected, this is what will print on the certificate, not on the circuit chart. The circuit chart will produce the information that was there prior to circuit not tested being selected. That completes this video on circuit data entry. Thank you for watching.